the United States Coast Guard Academy at New London, Connecticut. Here are assembled by competitive examinations young Americans between the ages of 17 and 22 who were put through a rigorous four-year training course to fit them for service as commissioned officers. These men are specially and technically trained to carry on the Coast Guard's work of enforcing customs and other maritime laws, assisting in national defense, and safeguarding life and property from the perils of the sea. This careful training is a far cry from the method used in the early Coast Guard when officers were commissioned from among those who had served in the disbanded Continental Navy. A far cry too from the later and unsatisfactory method of choosing Coast Guard officers from among the Navy Academy overflow and the Merchant Marine and a great improvement over the still later method of training the men exclusively on practice ships, a method rounded out in 1900 by the establishment of a school on land. In 1929, Congress provided funds for the modern building and grounds you see here, an institution adequate for the needs of the Coast Guard. The start of a new day. The bugler's call for breakfast changes his status from that of a big bad blower of Reveille to that of a popular captain of come and get it. I'll bet they don't rush like that to classes. Breakfast formation. Inspection of dress and promptness come before food. In any activity of the cadets as a whole, they follow a disciplinary routine. The academy provides the environment for instilling into the cadets the foundation upon which the morale of the service is built. The integrity of a commissioned officer of this service has never been questioned. And can these lads of 17 to 22 stow away the chow? Classes start at 8 o'clock. Here's the radio class, a vital part of any cadet's training in these ether-controlled times. In the span of a few short years, radio has revolutionized man's control of the sea. The cadets are taught to send and receive messages and are thoroughly grounded in the sciences and in all forms of communication. The direction finder, carried by all Coast Guard cutters and planes, enabling the officers to determine accurately the course to a vessel in distress or the location of a lurking smuggler. Point Judith, 90. Point Judith, 90. The engineering laboratory. Here is taught the construction, operation, and maintenance of gasoline, diesel, electric, and steam driven machinery, and the proper care of boilers so vital to steamship safety. The ordnance class, where the cadets learn to operate all types of armament used in modern warfare and the enforcement of law on the sea, up to and including the six-inch gun. At the close of this course, a cadet can break down and reassemble any ordnance piece used in the service. The cadets learn the workings of the fire control station, used in determining the proper range and deflection to be used on the sights of the gun. The Coast Guard being essentially a military arm of the national government, this knowledge is a vital part of the training. And it isn't only in time of war that the Coast Guard has need of its guns. In addition to these and other laboratory activities, the cadets are put through recitation and intensive classroom work, making for both practical and theoretical knowledge. Infantry drill. The Coast Guard is proud of its military training and stands in readiness at all times for war. It's the one military force that is forever active, working for country in time of war, for all humanity in time of peace. Four hours of each week are designated for these drills, which include the rudiments of open order, artillery, ceremonies, and exercise under arms and intensive practice in close order. Also, cadets receive classroom instructions in tactics, the rules and principles of military science. At the end of each school year, Prizes are awarded to the best drilled companies as chosen by judges from other services. Right, 
The cadets are required to participate in football and other sports. These sports have a twofold purpose, pleasure and the building of brawn for one of the world's toughest services. Each night study, it's not easy to absorb a working knowledge of the complex laws pertaining to maritime matters. The school year is divided into two academic terms and one sea term. Here the cadets are boarding a cutter for their three-month summer practice cruise. Since the Coast Guard officer must be a thorough seaman, he is carefully taught practical navigation, seamanship, and marine engineering. First, a jaunt to Quantico, Virginia for small arms target practice. At Quanto, the cadet is thoroughly trained in the care and operation of rifle, pistol, submachine, and machine gun. He's required to become proficient in the use of all these arms. On numerous occasions, the Coast Guard has been called upon to place landing forces ashore for the protection of life and property. Each cutter maintains a well-drilled force, capable of landing on short notice and of operating as an independent unit ashore. Back on board again, they stand out to sea, bound for foreign ports. The cadets receive practical instructions in gunnery and all matters relating to seamanship, navigation, marine engineering, and communication. Sextant reading. Practical navigation is taught by requiring the cadet to fix the ship's position by all approved methods. The seamanship class, not to you, sailor. Cadets are called upon for duties on the bridge or below deck. Here a class is receiving practical instruction in the engine room and in the fire room. Each cruise carries its deadbeat. No work, no study for these fellows, not even monkey drill. Returning to the United States, the cadets engage in battle maneuvers off the shore, putting into actual practice against floating targets their ordnance and gunnery training. There's a hit right through and into the sea beyond. They now have a chance to display their knowledge of the fire control station against an actual target. All the guns are brought into service. The cadets demonstrate their proficiency by firing the three-inch gun in record time. The 5-inch gun is next in order of service. The trainer and the pointer. The cadets prove their skill. Somebody is good. Here are three hits. And somebody is better. Here are four, two almost in the same place. But foreign crews and battle practice is over, and the cadets come home to the academy all set to take advantage of three weeks' leave. A last formation, a final order, and the wanderers in no uncertain manner prove they're glad to be home. But they'll be back again in 21 days, ready for a brand new year. After four years of work and study, the cadet is graduated and set out into the service. Prizes are awarded to the best all-around cadet and to outstanding cadets in the various subjects. After receiving his diploma, each graduating cadet is commissioned as an ensign in the Coast Guard by the Assistant Secretary of the United States Treasury. A final song, Goodbye Academy, Oak Coast Guard Forever.
and a new group of junior officers go out to take their places in the arduous, demanding duties of the ever-working Coast Guard.